G'day guys, welcome to another DIY episode. Today we're gonna to be working on this Triton which you might recognize behind us here. Now this Triton belongs to our head photographer Dean and we did a rig review on this a couple weeks back so you might recognize it from a bunch of our social media videos and such. Now Dean has to carry a whole bunch of camera gear from batteries, cameras themselves, lighting equipment, drones, all sorts of things. So he needs as much space as he can possibly get in the tub. So we've gone ahead and we've taken the back seats out of the car so I'm gonna build up a nice platform for each fridge to sit on top of, and as well as a nice little storage compartment underneath to store other boxes and stuff like that. And of course, Carney's here to sort out the 12 volt side of things. Yeah, sweet. So with Mitch working on the woodworking side of things, making up that platform, I'm gonna start transferring a lot of Dean's 12 volt gear out of the tub and into the back seat area. So Dean already has a SeaTech D250 SE DC-DC charger, and he's also got a 138 amp hour AGM battery in the back. But by bringing everything forward, we're not only going to achieve a bit better weight distribution, we're going to allow a lot more space in the tub for his gear, and we're also upgrading his system with one of the new King's 120 amp hour lithium batteries, plus a King's DC-DC charger, and a 500 watt inverter, which means he'll actually be able to charge his gear, whether it's a camera, a drone, or use his laptop, in the comfort and a bit more protected area of his cab. So I'm gonna get stuck into this because there's a fair bit of wiring I have to reroute and reposition from the tub into the cab as well as all this new gear. And Micho? Yep, so I'm just gonna get started on this platform, whip out the tape measure, do some measurements and get into it. Perfect, let's do it. Sweet. Okay, so the basic idea for the platform back here is I'm gonna put one piece of ply down on where the base of the seats would normally sit to replace them completely. Then I'm gonna lift up the sides by about 180 mil to give it a nice little area where Dean can store flat cases or even camera gear of any sort, maybe even recovery gear. And then on top of that, we're gonna have another piece of ply with marine carpet where the fridge can sit nice and secure. I'm also gonna put two tie down points on either side. And for all the 12 volt gear, which Carney's taking care of, I'm gonna make up a nice little backboard here for Carney to mount the inverter, the DC-DC charger, as well as the battery, which can sit nicely on this platform here. And to secure it all together, I'm gonna to use the factory bolt holes, which is of course gonna make it super easy to get this out if it needs to. Right, so Mitch has given me a bit of a rundown of where he's gonna build this backboard to, which gives me a bit of a basis for where the battery can sit, as well as where my DC-DC charger and inverter can go, which gives me the opportunity now to start running some of the wiring and figuring out the lengths that I need. Now with the Triton, they actually have a grommet both sides at the rear of the cab here, which means I can run power from under the bonnet for the DC-DC charger, under the vehicle and then come up through here rather than have to run it through the firewall and along under the carpet. Now that'll give me the opportunity to run the permanent solar that Dean already has fitted. I can run that wiring up here as well and connect it up to the DC-DC charger so everything's hooked up as it should be. It also means the way we've set it out, we can keep this factory jack here and the jack tools that would usually be up here will actually fit down in that storage compartment that Mitch is making so it'll all be neat and tidy. So the majority of the materials that we're gonna be using in this project are gonna be recycled or repurposed if you want. So what I'm gonna do is modify some old awning brackets that we had laying around and use them as feet for the box. I've also measured out exactly where the factory bolt holes are gonna be. So I just need to drill out a couple of holes and test fit a couple of times to make sure it's all gonna be secure. While Mitch is on the timber, I've been working on 12 volt. First, I've cut this M8 bolt down to a stud, added it to the battery so I can fit my mega fuse directly on. I've finished off most of the 12 volt prep work that I could do on the bench. Now my next step is to disconnect the existing system and I'm gonna reuse the same positive and negative wires from the starter battery to go to our new DC-DC charger. 
Once that circuit breaker under the bonnet has been disconnected, nothing is live in the back here, but I still need to disconnect that second battery. And I'm gonna remove all this anyway, so let's get stuck into it. So this grommet below the vinyl here is a bit difficult to access because of the thickness of the wire we're using for this DC DC charger. So I've actually taken off this corner trim piece here, which gives you access to inside the body. Now that way we can actually feed these thicker wires up. I'm gonna be able to hide them underneath here and over to my 12 volt setup. Yeah, so when you're carpeting something with marine carpet, it's uh, very important that you cover up the edges. Um, so we're also going to staple it. Now, we would normally use spray-on glue because it's a lot easier to work with, but we've run out, so any sort of glue like this, but just don't breathe it in because it's really bad for your health. And one more tip when you're gluing marine carpet, whether you're using spray-on, contact adhesive, or this stuff, is to let it dry for a couple minutes before you start putting it on because once it starts to dry, it'll get really tacky and it'll hold its form really nicely because if you put it on while it's soaking wet it's just going to fall apart so this way you just let it dry a little bit and it'll start to get real tacky. Okay so the base is all made up we've marine carpeted it and of course, marine carpet is super strong, so it's gonna do Dean very well because he's throwing a lot of gear under here. It's super, super strong. So now I've just gotta add the lid onto the top of the base here. And I'm just gonna drill some pilot holes along the edges here and put in some nice long wood screws and it'll be good. I wonder if Dean's gonna replace these jeans of mine too because it's his car that I'm working on. Now before I go ahead and start drilling all these pilot holes, I just wanted to show you guys, this is the photography case that Dean often uses. He's got a couple of these, so he's gonna be able to open up his passenger doors and fit them nicely inside of the platform here. And to just show you, it fits real snug in there. So it's not gonna rattle around heaps when he's on rough roads, which is absolutely perfect for what he needs. All right, sweet, so the top of the base is on. It's nice and secure and extremely strong. Now we're just gonna put it in for a final fit up and see how Khan's going. All right, sweet, so the platform's all done, it's in. Super secure, not going anywhere. You have to say that, it's law. And you might notice also here, we've got these tie down points that are bolted straight through the piece of ply down here and they are super, super strong. So this battery is not going anywhere. So now all I've got to do is rip this piece back off and then space out the back here because we've got a little bit of a gap which is causing a bit of bowing, which is no big deal. Just space it out with a bit of ply. And then Khan can go in with the 12 volt so you can put the DC DC charger and the inverter and see exactly what layout Dean's going to prefer. Mitch has pretty much finished up all of the cabinetry that we needed in the back of the Triton here, which means it's time for me now to start laying out and connecting up all the 12 volt. Now I'm not going to go through every single step because of course every setup is different, but I will go through the basics. As usual, I'm using the same sort of tools. I've got some bits and pieces here, some screws, heat shrink and P-clips that are gonna help me run the wiring and secure everything down neatly and tidily. 
I've also got some extra crimp terminals, some wiring with pre-connected quick connect plugs to make things easier, and some extra wiring so I can connect up the inverter. It's just some spare stuff I had laying around. And I've already test fitted everything in the vehicle so I know roughly where I need to mount it. Plus I've already run the main power cable that was in the tub back into the cabin so it's gonna be super easy to connect up. Getting pretty close now to finishing off this 12 volt backboard that's gonna go in the back of the cab here. Couple of points, added the DC DC charger and I've wired up a quick connect plug straight into that solar input. So Dean can plug in his permanent solar or if he's at camp and parked in the shade, he can plug in a blanket or a fold out panel. Plus I've added a second quick connect plug with a positive and negative that's gonna go directly to the battery and he can run his fridge off that one. Now the only things left to do is run the power in from the starter battery. So I've left that for the moment so we can figure out where to connect it in the vehicle. And then I've got to make up some leads for the inverter that are gonna run into the battery as well. And again, I just wanna sit this in the vehicle to see where I should run these to make the most use of the space. Uh, we've also hooked up the gray wire for the lithium and I've terminated the other wires, including the smart alternator wire for the moment because Tritons actually have a fixed voltage alternator. It's really good that we've picked up from this factory bolt because it means it's made it really easy to take in and out for all this testing and test fitting. And it's looking really good. Couple of earth leads here, they're all gonna go to the negative terminal of the battery. That's gonna earth the DC-DC charger as well as the solar input, plus this other quick connect plug for Dean's fridge. Next up, I've gotta also think about the positive wires that have gotta to connect to this side of the fuse holder. I could probably cut this one down here and make it a little shorter as well. Next up, I need to figure out where I want to connect up the starter and alternator feed from under the bonnet, which I've already run up through the side of the vehicle here. I'm thinking I might just use a terminal and connect it here, fix it down so it's out of the way. Getting very close now to completing this 12 volt setup. We've basically just got to tidy up the rest of this wiring. I've just connected that main power feed from under the bonnet. Of course, I've disconnected the circuit breaker under there, so it's all safe at the moment. And I've left this fuse out of this fuse holder while I've connected everything up, so nothing's live. The other thing I'm gonna do is use one of these P-clips just around this lead here to keep it out of the way and protected, and to prevent it rubbing, I've added a little bit of corrugated tubing as well. I ended up using that grommet down under the vinyl flooring there for the permanent solar wiring. Couldn't fit the terminals up through there. That's all right, I've cut them off and I'm just gonna add a quick connect plug on the end so I can plug it directly into here and then into the DC-DC charger. So aside from the fuse in the back here, the circuit breaker under the bonnet, which are preventing anything from being live, the only other wire I haven't connected so far is this temperature sensor. Now lithium batteries don't actually need a varying temperature charging profile, so I'm just gonna bundle this up neatly and tuck it out of the way. Don't cut it off because then the unit won't operate. Last thing, put the fuse back in on the battery trim's back on. I'm going to test fit this fridge, plug it in, make sure everything's working. One strap on the back, we've put these tie down points on the front. Okay, so we're on the home stretch here. Now one final thing I'm going to do for Dean is I'm going to put some eyelets or tie down points along the front edge and the back edge of the platform here, just so we can tie down some of these photography bags. All right, sweet, so the eyelets are in. Now let's give it a test. That bag. Wait, Dean stuff is heavy. All right, sweet. Strap here. Sweet. Not going anywhere. And the cool thing about having three eyelets means it's pretty modular, so if he only wants to tie down one box like this, 
You can just feed this through like so, back through itself, like that, and hook it back onto either eyelet on either side. All right, so we're pretty much done here. Mm. You took your time with that 12 volt, didn't you? Yeah, mate, had to wait for someone to uh, finish off the cabinetry before I could actually install it. Oh, so that's what happened. Yeah, waiting uh, on other people like you. Oh, okay, fair enough. Well, all that we've got to do now is put it through its paces out in the bush. Yeah, so I think the next time you see us, we'll be out there giving this thing a good run for its money. So as you can see, we're out in the bush and we've been putting the Triton through its paces for a good solid week now and it's already proven to be super practical moving all that gear to the front. We've not only cleared up a bunch of space in the back, but we've also made the car handle a little bit better too. And we've really found that having that 12 volt setup in the cab has been really useful for powering things like laptops or recharging cameras while we're shooting. So let's take a look inside at how good this setup really is. Okay, so on the passenger side of the vehicle here, he's got heaps of storage space underneath the fridge here to store tripods and stuff like that. It's absolutely incredible for trips. But more importantly, we've got this awesome fridge here, which has not skipped a beat thanks to that awesome 12 volt setup that Khan's done. And of course, on the driver's side of the vehicle, these Oki straps have proved themselves to be invaluable. That setup is unreal because you can change it around depending on which size case he wants to use. And of course, you can remove the Oki straps completely if he wants a nice platform to work from. As Mitch said, one of the best uses we've found for this so far is actually using it as a work platform. It's perfect because you can set your laptop up here, plug it straight in and have it charging while you're using it. Not only that, everything is tucked away under here neatly, so you've got quick access to all your computer gear, and the whole 12 volt setup has been working perfectly. This lithium battery is staying high voltage running the fridge easily, and we've got the DC-DC charger in there with the solar on the roof that's just keeping it charged up. And as we said in the build of this setup, we kept the factory jack exactly where it should be, so it's easy to get to. Plus we added a little snake bite kit in here as well, which fit quite nicely and is super accessible. Now, if you're keen to see more install videos or a 12 volt install, make sure you check out that video below. Otherwise, hit like, subscribe, and let us know in the comments if you wanna see more of this sort of video.